and then cause for concern. Buffalo River going strongly and Buffalo River wins the race for the second time. Second climbing star. Third Welcome back to the channel everybody, it's Group 1 Cox Plate Day, it's a massive day of the 10 of the best, including the Group 1 Manicato Stakes Transfer from the Friday to the Saturday, uh, uh, due to a lightning bot last year, and they've stuck with it, uh, running the Manicato on the Saturday this year, uh, it's an absolutely cracking card, uh, really good race to Cox Plate, best Cox Plate we've seen in a number of years, uh, a lot of quality and a couple of absolute superstars, and another one will be adding their not adding their name to the great honor roll of the Cox Plate, won by some absolute champions in their time. So let's get into the preview and find the winners because I'm confident I can bounce back of what's been a really uh, disappointing time. Obviously, only one winner last Saturday being Buffalo River and none at Geelong on Wednesday. But let's get into the preview and get the winners and bounce back. Race number one at Mooney Rally to start. Corvette Cup Day is a handicap over the 1,000 metres, and I'm with Fasuto on top. A bit of value in the first. Was a really good run first up, considering all things being considered. Hit the line hard, then Blake Shin put it in a gap where, it f where the horse fell a lot and lost the rider. So now I'm treating this as him being only second up here and has a really good second up record being four one, uh, one, four starts for the one win and a third. Really good form at Mooney Valley in having the one third. Has seen the track and ran well at the track before. Two from six at the thousand metres. I think it'll sit sit handy here off the two leaders and be charging over the top of the lane. Unflinching like he gets a sole lead in front with Torting on its outside. I'm taking on at the price and I think it's better on a wet track. And Ashford Street needs a wet surface. To see, to see how it's really going uh, here, but I think it ran well. But for pseudo for mine, race one at Mooney Valley, 25 the win to start Cox Plate Day. Race number two at Mooney Valley is a listed English banner for the two year olds over the 1,000 metres. They're all on debut here, and I'm with Blue Stratum. Just needs two scratchings, and it's in the field. I'm confident he'll gain a start. Damien Lane, and they set off for the McAvoy team. Tony and Calvin. Barry, number three, perfect. Has to carry the weight, though. I don't think that'll be an issue for this horse. He's shown immense talent at the jump outs in his trials. He's a blue point colt, and I'm just so excited to see what he can do here. If he gets into the field, he'll absolutely smash them. He'll win by three lengths. He's a... He, I'm not going to say the M word, but he's pretty close to it here if he's in the field. Blue Allure for second for Damien Oliver. I think can run really well. Clear second pick here for the Hayes boys from Barry number five. Hayasugi for third for James McDonald. Clinton McDonald can run well here, but the draw worries me from 14. And Copra Keep. Kappa, Kappa, Kappa Rico, uh, I thought it was over the odds of $23. But Blue Stratum for mine in the English banner. 30 the win. If he's in the field, he'll bolt in. Race number three at Mooney Valley is the Group 3 Tessio Stakes over the 1,600 metres, and I'm with Wishlaw Lass on top. It was a game effort last night at Corford to uh, win. Hold on, because uh, Barbie's Fox was coming in at late and was still game enough to win. Damien Lane sticks here. Simon Wild from the inside draw ought to go straight to the top, and they won't catch her, I don't think. And this horse should argu arguably should be undefeated, uh, and he's definitely stakes class. Nick ticked that box off last night. I think he'd go one uh, and get another win here and win the Tessio Stace. Sole choice for second is the only horse in this field I can see beating it. Linda Meach, good draw, 54 kilos, goes for and has a weight advantage on which law less. The lesser file uh, likely gets back and runs on. There's only third up. I'd, want to, I'd like to see this horse fourth up. I think can be winning, but has the J-Mac factor. And Dazzling Lucy, I thought, could run well for Jake Noonan and Tony Noonan at $13. But I'm with which law less in the Tessio, 20 the win. Race number four at Mooney Valley is the listed William Crockett Stakes over the 1,200 metres, and I am with inhibitions. I was with this horse last week over the 1,400 metres of the 1,000 guineas prelude, and I'm sticking strong here. Back to 1,200 metres, good draw. Only goes up a kilo from its last start effort. I think 1,400 stretched it too far. Back to the 1,200 metres. Craig Williams in the settle. Early market support. Uh, likely settles in a good spot at just outside of the leaders or just behind the leaders, I think it can win, and I think it will win. Cigar flick for second. J-Mac jumps off inhibitions to ride this horse for Chris Weller from the Barrier 14. Uh, bit difficult, but it's going to need a good ride for... But and is hard fit fifth up. Soltair comes down from Sydney for John O'Shea. Blake's in the saddle again. Bad draw, only second up. And Gumdrops, I thought, could run well. Damien Lane back in the saddle for this horse, I think, can run well. But inhibitions for mine, the William Cro Crockett. Really confident. 30 the win. 
Race number five at Mooney Valley is the Group 2 Crystal Mile over the 1600 metres, and I'm with Antino on top. Really, really, really confident he'll be winning this. Fourth up, hard fit now. Arguably should be undefeated this campaign. Had no luck first up, bolted in the sand and stakes, and went down by a photo finish in the two rack. If he'd have won the two rack, he probably would have been a sh more short price favourite here. From barrier number four, Blake Shin will have him in a good spot. He's nine from 12, and he'll be. Uh, 10 from 13 here. He, I just I just think he'll win this. 2A is a cracking price. Prowess for second. 7 from 10 for the team coming over from New Zealand. Marks are in this little barrier. 1. Not sure it's the ideal barrier for this horse uh, with its bracing pattern to get back and run on. 2. Valu uh, has seen Mooney Valley before in his fourth up with Jamie Carr in this little can run well. And Banker's Choice comes out of a good run in the tour rack but was 100 to 1 that day but though does have J-Mac. And you'd have to think how much is that influencing the price. But I'm with Antonio in the Crystal Mile. 35 the win. Race number six at Mooney Valley is the Group 2 Phillies Classic over the 1,600 metres. And I'm with Aprilia on top for Andrew Forsman and Damien Oliver to score. He's winner of the Cox Plate Carnival here. From barrier number seven, fourth up near hard fit. First up went to the 1,200 metres of the three-year-old Phillies play behind inhibitions and ran well, ran sixth, then stepped up to the 1,400 metres and ran fourth in the gym, Maloney behind, behind Oz Empress and Dasonic Boom and Poifek, running home down the outside, and then went to Flemington and was beaten by Zardoz, who had absolutely no luck at its start prior, but I thought it was good, was on speed over the Edward Manifold distance of 1,600 metres and was good at holding on to second there, now up to the, staying at 1,600 metres, finds its right race, has had experience at Mooney Valley previously, and I think he can win this. And eight dollars is a cracking price. Skybird, obvious talent, two from two, but where the unbeaten, undefeated horse, Captain Amelia, comes out of the flight stakes in Sydney and broadcast. I thought could run well, even though being a maiden. Now, Prillia for mine in the group two for this classic fifteen each way. Race number seven at Mooney Valley is the group two Mooney Valley Vars over the 80, 2040 meters, and I'm really confident here on Snowman. I think if Chris Waller brings it south, and I think he will because J-Max in the saddle in Melbourne, I think it'll win and win comfortably. Uh, has had recent racing in, up in Sydney, draws good here in barrier number seven, and has beaten a good horse who is favourite for the derby, you know, a little horse called Riff Rocket, and I think with that kind of form, it'll take a hell of a beating. It, it could take a lot of beating here. Verdad for second, obviously coming out of the premium form reference of the Caulfield Guineas, ran well there, got its momentum hold, and it is only having its fourth start here, so it has to be considered Sun Source flying up to the 2,000 metres with OP Boston in the set, I think can run well in Port Lockroy. Another one accepted in Sydney, uh, who could come south for Andrew Forsman, so Annabelle Nation for Mickey, uh, Mickey D for Annabelle Nation, I think can run well at $7, but I'm with Snowman in the Mini Valley Vars, really confident here, 17 the win. Race number eight at Mooney Valley is the Group 1 Manicato Stakes over the 1,200 metres. I'm going to use it, the M word, moral. That's what Imperator is, in he is here, and I can't see it being beaten. 15 from 21, OP Boston in the saddle, barrier number four. Settles in a handy position, just has given them absolute wind burn its past two, swept past them, and winning comfortably. And at $1.45, it'll sh start a bit shorter than that on jump time, and you'll see why. She's a class horse, and it'll be a class win. Uncommon James, the clear second pick. The blinkers didn't work last start. Uh, ran third to uh, Imperatriz uh, first up. Then ran second to Asfura, who franked the Imperatriz form, who, who ran second to her first up. Uh, I think third up here, Damien Lane in the saddle. Good draw, considered handier. I don't think it's going to beat Imperatriz, but is a clear is the clear run one. I think will be finishing second. I am me gets a good run in front for James McDonald. Just don't know how much it'll have left at the end. And Buenos Notches has the Everest form, who we we've seen it time and time again. is is a good reform reference, and is a good horse. I think can run well here. But Imperatriz will win the Manicato. But my strategy is twenty as twenty five dollar exacta Imperatriz to win it and and uncommon James to run second. Race number nine at Mooney Valley. It's the big one. It's the Group One Cox Plate over the 2,040 meters, and it, and another champion is going to add their name to the honor roll, and it's going to be, I think, Romantic Warrior here. Forgive his run in the turn, but was very good uh, running fourth. Uh, has enormous upside to come. Only second up here. They wouldn't be running him if he wasn't ready. I think he's the best horse in the race. 10 from 15. He's an absolute star. He's a Hong Kong star. And I think J Mac will win his second cocked plate in a row. And it'll be on Romantic Warrior here. Alligator Blood for second. I'm a massive fan of this horse too. Won its past two starts. Gets a good run in front for Timmy Clark. I think it's going to run a hell of a race here. Look, you win it for a long way. But Romantic Warrior will be charging late. Militarizing is another one that will be charging late with a lightweight. 
with being a three-year-old with a good draw, Zach Lloyd just don't know how far back it gets. And Gold Trip comes out of the call for a cup last Saturday and ran a cracker there. And onto the Melbourne Cup next uh, in a, about a, a week's time on Tuesday. And I think this will be a can he can run well here? Ram Edit Warrior for mine in the Cox Plate 40 to win the best horse will win it in a $10 trifecta on my first four. Race number 10 at Mooney Valley is the Group 3 Red Anchor Stakes over the 1200 minis, and I'm with Schwartz on top for James McDonald and John O'Shea to finish the day on a winning note. I think it'll remain undefeated here and be two from two. It was an absolute dominant win, uh, winning its maiden at Gosford. Uh, over the 1,200 metres on debut. Stays at the 1,200 metres here, and I think can be very effective in winning. I think it'll find the front and bolt in here. Mahaba for second, likely gets back and runs on hard for Mickey D. Graham Beggs. Archo Nardra can sit prominently for Mark Zara, Matt Laurie, and Barber has had good early support here for Damien Lane and James Cummings. Also, Damien, oh, yeah, Damien Lane now riding Mahaba with the scratching of La Parine. But I wish Schwartz in the red anchor, really confident. J makes a score the last winner on Cox Plate Day, $18 the win. Thank you everyone for watching my preview for Cox Plate Day. I hope I've got the winner here and I'm really confident I've got the winner of the Manicardo. But a lot of winners to be found throughout this card and I'm confident I've found a couple of advance back of what has been a disappointing couple of uh, tipping days. Obviously last Saturday only having one and having none at Geelong on Wednesday. But I'm going to bounce back here and get a get everybody a couple of winners and hopefully we can uh, bounce back here thank you for watching and i'll see you next saturday for derby day